Hey guys, we're live. I uh, wanted to come on video to talk about how to write better content and get more traffic. This has been a question from many of you. Been wanting to cover it for a little bit of time. So I decided to come on video for, uh, let's say, about 20 or so minutes to go a little in depth. Um, the frameworks, uh, some of the strategies and tactics that you can use deploy so that uh, whether you are in your blog, whether that's on Facebook, Instagram, you know, you're writing better content that's going to drive you more traffic. And then that can result in even more like leads, sales. But let's focus on those components first uh, before getting into uh, all other parts, like what happens after the conversion. What happens when you have an offer, All right? So it's going to focus on creating content for your audience that excels, that captures their attention, that will bring them in to your world, and that the content is of quality, not just quantity, uh, but quality. And so that's what I'm going to cover in this video here. Um, just let me know, though, if you're here on the live, give me a hashtag live in the comments. Hashtag replay if you're going to be here at that time. Just want to know um, and welcome in again. If you're just jumping on, I'm going to get into this share screen a moment, a moment here and um, word for word. I mean, it wasn't even written down yet. I'm going to go through it with you and show you the step by step process of writing better content, the things that I'm doing uh, on a day to day basis um, from the second in the morning to um, before and even a little bit after the afternoon, what I do uh, just daily. So I'm gonna show you how not only to write better content, whether again, that's a blog, that can mean you're typing something in for a Facebook post to get engagement, awareness, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, TikTok, you know, more video, even Pinterest when you're writing the keywords for it in the description. But this can relate to anything, the description of a YouTube video, Vimeo video, uh, goes above and beyond. But um, yeah, that's what I'm going to get into. So let me open this stream. Okay. And let me do this. So here I've written down how to write better content and get more traffic. I know some of you have been wanting to know how. Um, and I know there's a lot of information out there causing information overload. Even it gets to me to this day at times because... You'll hear from one and then the next. Um, and you don't know who to truly follow or what to truly implement because you keep questioning, if I went this way, will this work? And if it works, is it the best? And if it's not, you're just going to waste yourself so many days, weeks, months, and even years as I did in the beginning. Um, so and also I'm going to show you, I'm going to get into my sites a little bit here just to show you the way to write better content. So stick around with me till the end, till, towards like the middle of this. So I'll, I'll go over that. Um, and lastly, I wanted to get into blog structure for SEO and affiliate sales, but um, I'll cover that in another video. Uh, not sure if it'll be this week, maybe next week or so, but let's get into it. So how to write better content and get more traffic. So here are some quality tips to take away. Um, so one of them being gathering information from um we're gonna go into it in safe forums okay this is one of my favorite strategies to use before i ever write content i'm in research mode 110 percent focused um i usually will take more than an hour to do this it could take you more or less depending on what type of article you're putting together what type of post but what i like to do a lot of the time um, is go through forums, okay, forums. That meaning you have things like, so you have Reddit, we have Quora, we have your niche, and then you type in forum at the end of that. For example, back pain forum. Um, you will get those results most likely. And what you can do is go through these forums, go through um, these answer sites, even Yahoo Answers, you can do this. And the list will go on and on. 
what you want to do is start listening to what other people are expressing. So I'll use the example here of back pain. So if somebody were in a forum on Reddit and they were looking for a solution to better exercises. Well, let's see what kind of better exercises are they looking for? Somebody might have listed that they had um, a issue with their back due to acute pain. It's not severe, it's not chronic, it's not sciatic. It's just something very simple and they wanna get a sense of how to treat it with simple exercises. So now you have a better idea because you went into that forum and you typed in your niche and you started getting um, ideas on what people are talking about. And it's not that only one, there are so many different uh, like stages from beginners to experts. Uh, there will be more simple questions and there will be more advanced questions. So you just have to pick and choose um, and figure out what you can go with and then leave the rest for another time. Um, and what I like to do is when I'm going through these forums, I'll have an Excel spreadsheet. So make sure you have your Excel spreadsheet, um, your Google Sheets, and, you know, paste those questions in there. All right, so that way you don't forget. If you don't go right into your content, but you're researching, you have them in a place that you can refer back to. When you refer back to them, then you can start generating topic ideas off of that. And you're asking yourself, how does this, how does this translate into better content? All right, so you have that. Um, we'll come to this in a second. Let me copy this. But we're going to go into Google. So if we're in forums, right, if we're in Reddit, for example, we got into Quora and we started hearing how you know, they had a question on a specific um, topic of yours, your niche that you're in, your affiliate site, uh, whatever it is that your authority site, whatever it is you're doing, you're approaching that from a question and you're then asking yourself, okay, I can immediately answer this, but how can I write better content for it? Not only on Quora, but on my post, in a Facebook post, how can I make this my own? And so then you go, okay, this person is asking a question on how to, um, you know, fix my uh, subacute back pain, uh, dealing with knee pain at the moment, joint discomfort. You're going to get all these questions on Quora. And I've done this for a long time is you go in there and you answer those questions. Um, and then, you know, you can get a response or you can leave a little link to your blog post, even at times video. And so, you then want to get ready for that and on your own platform, um, put that into a very in-depth quality piece of content. So you're seeing these questions being asked on, um, on Quora, in Reddit, in, every other, uh, in any of these other places. And then you can, that's not what I wanted. Let's go back into Google. And I can come into the Google search bar here and get a better idea. Okay, so if I started with forums, right, I'm gathering ideas on how to write content, but not just any better content, because you're understanding what the search intent is from people. You gather that information from Core, and then you can come back here and say something like how to get rid of lower So somebody may have been looking for on Quora or on Reddit, how to get rid of lower back pain and fast at home. Like they, they were in there talking about how, well, they can't stand up or they can't leave home without getting an inflammation, um, some type of a joint discomfort, discomfort that then affects as it leads up to the lower back extremities. But then, so they're asking these questions on Google. And what I can do here is get an idea from the auto suggest tool in Google, as you saw here, that's what I did. So I typed in how to get rid of lower back pain. And then you're seeing all these suggestions. These are the things that people are typing into Google and they're trying to figure out a solution for. They have a problem, problems, and you are the person that's gonna position the solution for them, okay? And so this is how you start Generating, this is part of the keyword researching phase, um, not to go into depth into that, that'll be for another time, but we are gonna stick with the fast and then at home, and that's 
intent here, that is a long keyword. And that's something that you have to do more, even more research on to see if it could even rank in Google. But uh, again, that's not what I want to get into this. But this is how to generate uh, better quality content is by understanding the intent. What are people searching for? And so the auto-suggest tool that we took from something like Quora or a forum and uh, Reddit, then we can apply that into the Google search bar here. Um, and then go ahead and get results for it and get a better sense of what's happening on this page. And then if you're not even using a blog, you can apply this to video. You can apply this to a short TikTok, Pinterest, in your Facebook posts, wherever that may be. But Google is a great way, Bing, all these search engines are great ways to gather more information on what to um, eventually write your best content on. So you can see here, these are more authoritative websites. So Ranking for this, even especially for me at this point, won't be as easy uh, without the use of backlinks and without further research. Um, there are ways, but look, you get the spine health, you get the um, WebMDs, the medical news today. So these are a little bit tougher to outrank, but without going again into depth on that, I wanna cover on the subject of gathering ideas and writing better content. So it always starts off with, it could be at, doesn't have to be in this particular order, but one of the tips is using a forum, right? We can use those forums like Reddit. We can get into the Quora and figure out what it is people are actively asking questions for. What do they need help with? And when you get that information, then you can go make a blog post about it. Um, but then, you know, before even that, we go into the Google say, uh, stage, if you, if you would like to. And this can be vice versa, right? Switch, you switch the two. Um, and then we started gathering ideas on what people were talking about. They were going through the auto-suggest tool. And if you saw in our search, and I didn't go into depth on this, but you could see the related questions or people are also asking... So you can see this in the auto suggestion tool and then you can see people also are looking for and asking. And at the bottom of those results, you get the bottom footer that then shows you the um, extra results, things that people are asking, things that people are searching for. And so you don't wanna go into putting a blog post, for example, in this example, I'm gonna use blogs and just put on there what you think, what your opinion is, what you believe without first gathering intel and research on what's happening in these forums, Yahoo, your niche plus forum, Quora, Reddit, et cetera. The list goes on, Warrior Forum, all these different places, wherever, whatever niche you are in. Um, then you can use something like Google, right? We use Google, we can take what people are searching for in these forums, like we did earlier with the, um, people are looking for better exercises for back pain, but then I used in Google, uh, could have been anything, could have been how to get rid of back pain. Fast. Somebody during COVID is having a problem with it. So then we could take that sort of a question or sort of an idea and fit it into Google and see what comes up. Or if you have your keyword research tool, or we can use something like Jaxi, like I'm using, and then go plug that in to the auto suggest ABC generating uh, part of it. And it'll give you a whole bunch of different results on it. Um, and then from there, you can start filtering out things. You can continue even deeper into your research um, and, and do so like that. But then when we go and create the, um, so then we're, we're gonna go create the post or we're gonna go create the better content. Um, you have to have an idea of what is my framework, right? What is the framework? We don't ever do anything without a framework. What is the framework, for example? So framework being, what is my step-by-step -step process or my strategy that I'm gonna use to write better content, right? So it's another way of thinking about what is a strategy? What is my strategy? And that strategy can be a step-by-step -step process, right? It can be a 
like a table of contents. You know, when you go to a book, if you've ever opened a book digitally or physically, you'd see the table of contents. Each chapter is a strategy. Each chapter is part of the framework. It's a step-by-step process. So when you go and create your content after you've done this, and we didn't go in the depth, I just wanted to show you examples on how to generate better content first by getting better at keyword research, getting better at your researching stage, because that right there is the most important part of writing better content. And you don't likely hear that often, but I want to make it known that you need to be better and get better. And this only happens with repetition day in and day out at research. The research phase is going to determine the quality of your content, bar none. That's it, period. No mas. Okay, that's it. So you got to get in there. Again, that's why I want to overemphasize this is get into the forums. See what other people are searching for. What are they having problems with? What are the questions they're asking? Go into Google, type that in. If it's not a question, it's a how-to, it's a review. It might be a product that they were concerned with. And you just find that information. You dig in there deeper with keyword research tools. Go into YouTube, right? YouTube is another one you can use. Go in there and apply those type of keywords. See what people are looking for. What are the things that your market is already consuming, right? We have to know what your market is consuming. Don't go into a completely... Uh, blue ocean, right? We want to create our own ocean, but we want to go into a red ocean that, you know, these people are already feeding off these sharks. Maybe it's your competition, but you generate the content from that and you make it your own. You never copy, but you make what you know, what your experience is like, what you've heard, what you're commonly knowing, and you add that into your framework, right? So we have done the researching stage right we go so in depth in that i can't cover that in this video we go through google we do our keyword research tool we even maybe use one or two or three just to compare we use something like sam rush okay we use we can even use hrefs but i don't want to go into that in too depth and what you end up doing is what is my framework going to look like for my content that I just researched, that I just found a winning keyword, that, look, I'm going to put this Facebook post together and I'm going to rock it, right? you got to know what your framework is. Before that, again, it's the whole researching stage. And then we go into step four here. We understand what is that proprietary framework, this is why so many people fail. They never get to a point where they can realize what an actual framework is and how to use that to create better, higher quality content. Okay. All in English there. And so what you need to understand is it's just, again, it's a step-by-step process. You know, chapter one, chapter two, chapter one can be like, um, you know, we're going to do this. If it's pertaining to a blog post, I want to keep it on the, a tangent linear line of uh, a blog post, um, you know, calculus speaks, but um, I want to keep it in this regard that we got to think about what is our higher level. Okay. It's, it's like you're in the food chain at the very top of the pyramid, right? We got the, we got the apex predators, got the lions, we got the sharks, got the people of the land, the ones of the seas. And then at the very bottom, you know, we have the praise, the ones who fall victim. It could be plants, uh, photoplankton, um, anything in dirt. It could be anything, right? At the very bottom, the soil. Think about it as the bottom of the ocean, bottom of the land. And that's what that, uh, that's where that congregates. And so when we talk about from, uh, I, and I, I usually like thinking about things from end to start. So I'm going to go from end to start. Everything you do from this point forward, think about reverse engineering. I want you to actually literally, you know, get a piece of paper. If you have a whiteboard on your desktop and write down the words reverse engineer, right? You got to put that hat on and say, look, I'm going to reverse engineer. Before I even get into my table, my office, you say to yourself, I am a reverse engineer. Okay, you got to get that into your head. 
um, I, I've said this over and over to people in a small area that I coach as well. Um, and you know, this is the truth. You got to put that hat on that says reverse engineer, right? And put it on forward so everybody can see it in front of you, not behind you. Like, you know, you put the side caps, like a little cholo or something. No, you got to make sure you put that out in front of you so that people see the words reverse engineer and that you can see it every single day that, okay, what does that mean? Right? Reverse, excuse my caps locks, there, but I really wanted to make it obvious. When we reverse engineer, we're starting at the end in mind. What is it that our reader wants? What is it that they want? Want. I do this and I think about it every single day. Not a day passes by where I haven't at least thought about what is it that my audience, my future customer, what is it that they want? Okay, you got to think about that. And that means what is my offer basically, right? So we got to think about this and say, what is the offer going to look like for the audience that we're here to serve? This goes for every and any niche. What is my offer? What is it in that content that I'm going to go write the best quality? It's going to be more quantity than what else is out there. If it's again on the trajectory of a blog post, you go through Google, you get ideas of what your competition is already producing. You even read that and you see, okay, what are they missing that I'm going to add into mine? What is And we're going to break that down into each part of this framework, okay? So the offer, and I cover this in the one blog post away challenge, guys. If you haven't gotten in there yet, um, I have yet to. I, I got to respond back to some of your guys' emails and comments uh, but this covers it in there. So offer, what is it that we want to give our audience? Like, what is it? Okay, it's the call to action, right? We've we got to give them a call to action. Point blank, call to action at the very end. Um, it's going to enhance the quality and it's going to help you write better content because you're not just going to write to write, Right. How many times, if you've done this, have you written a piece of content and at the very end of it have then, have then thought, oh, where am I going with this? What is it that I'm trying to actually do? What is my intent? A lot. It has happened to me. It doesn't happen so often anymore, but I, because I know what my offer is. What am I offering the audience that I'm here to serve, right? If you're going to take them into a freebie cheat sheet, right? Maybe maybe it's a cheat sheet on uh, on getting better with keto, the 10, um, here's, or, or here can be a, um, a free, it's up here. It could be a free, a free blueprint. I like to call them free blueprint guides. Uh, I don't know, I just, it, it, and I've tested it, uh, tested it out, A-B tested, and I feel like it just works better. But again, it depends on a, on a niche you're in. And so freebie blueprint guide, just, it's like, okay, you, okay, I tried keto for one week and you would not believe the step-by-step -step process I was able to uncover. Give me your email and I'll show you, right? So now we have an idea of what that offer is, or, or, or we can go, you, know, you could ask for the sale. If you're doing an affiliate niche authority website, and I've done this a lot of times, I'll get into the sites in a moment here. Stick with me. Hey, and thanks for being here, by the way. I know I don't come on live too much. Uh, lately, I haven't been on the group doing these lives, but if you enjoy them, let me know in the comments section. Uh, give me some ideas if you wish. Um, I've been listening to you guys, especially those who come in here with questions and things that they need help on. Uh, gives me a better idea what to create content around. Um, but I've been just really in my blogs. <laughs> Guys, that's where I live. I live in my blogs and it's like the best feeling. I've covered this in another video, but uh, mentally and physically just makes me feel a lot better and calmer, releases stress and anxiety. And I'm sure some of you have gone through that process. So it is a little difficult at times for me to come on video being an introvert, um, but I have the skill sets when I go ahead and use them in routine. Um, so anyways, so if you're, if you're going to take them to a, Let's say you are promoting a, a bike, right? And you want them to buy that bike. You're like, here, this is what I want you to take action on. Now, go to Amazon, 
You share a cell. It could be the actual retailer, okay? But it does not matter. Point being is you're giving them an offer, right? You're, you're saying here, and when you have an idea of what your offer is going to look like, okay, you know mentally what that content has to do, okay? Even before you've stepped foot into that arena, even before you've laid a finger on a key, this is what I do every day. I think about what is it that I'm trying to give them an offer to. And again, you don't know that, right? Oh, wait, you do. Because why? You did your research up here in these beginning stages. You understood what's going on in the forums. Better exercises for acute back pain. Maybe I'm going to go write a blog post about um, the 10 top 10 exercises. And if you want five plus more exercises that are exclusive to what you can find online, give me your name and email here and I'll send them right to you. Cora, question. Um, what is the best mattress in a box for uh, easy sleepers, right? I've done stuff like this. And then you go in there, you could go through your step-by-step -step researching phase. These are just some ideas. Again, I didn't go too in depth, right? That would be like, that'd be a whole master class of its own. And I don't want to do that at this moment. I feel like I wouldn't have the energy to do that. But um, anyways, so we figured out that, okay, we, we know what it is and we can go write these how-to posts. We can go and write these review posts, informational infographic um, lists, posts, whatever that is. And then the list goes on and on. And then we can go and then start understanding what our offer is going to look like. Not enough people talk to you about this. What they do talk to you about is look, here's a strategy, here's a framework, go and apply it. It's going to help you write better quality when you have a framework. No, but you, you're missing the point. You're missing the point that you need to have better researching skills. And it only gets better over time, okay? Don't expect the first day if you're just getting started today and you're like, oh, man, this Michael guy, just he knows what he's doing, but how does he expect me to get it done the first time? It takes practice, right? When I played soccer for so many years, I was the worst person in the game at the age of about nine when I – got into like the league. I played with kids who were older than my age in the Mexican league. And that's only how I learned by playing with people who were older than me and becoming better. And, you know, got to a point where uh, things went off the ground for me. But so we wonder, understand what that offer looks like, right? We got the offer in mind. Now we know what to do. Okay. So now we're going to go into number B, uh, to be part of our framework here. So the first part, we figured out what our, what our offer was going to look like. And then we figure out what is the messaging, okay? What is that messaging going to look like? And so we, we start to take a clear picture of our offer. We don't know yet what we want to write down word for word. You shouldn't, okay? Don't feel bad if you don't. So we have an idea of what that offer looks like, okay? And then we think about it and we say, what is our messaging going to look like? So we use what we already researched to our post. If, again, if it's a Facebook post, we go and say, we're going to talk about, um, you know, the five key steps to removing weight loss within 30 days on keto, right? So we have our headline. Same thing with blogs. We have generated that keyword that we're going to incorporate into that post. And so we're going to write around that main headline, okay? Because we want to eventually get click-through rates, higher conversions, right? With our content, that's going to give you the higher, your content bar none is the higher conversion part. And, but we, before that, again, the offer point blank, get that in your head. Don't miss that out. Again, we got our reverse engineering cap on, right? We put off our, our guru hat. We put off our, um, I think I know everything or our, our little like, um, distraction hats, right? It's where we all got to go attend to our family or our hobbies or what we got to do in our community. So we do that. And then we work backwards. We say, what does our offer look like? What is our messaging going to be? And this messaging is a framework of its own. So this is where we get into frameworks of frameworks of frameworks. So before I actually show you that, let me get into number C here or C, letter C. Um, and then, so we're going to know what our headline is really. It's just the headline. It's just as simple as that. We don't want to complicate things. We want to make them as simple. And there's frameworks within frameworks on all this, um, especially when we get to the messaging part. But I don't want to confuse you on all this right now. But we have our offer. 
and we know where our, uh, our, our step B is, our messaging. And within our messaging, we got to figure out, okay, what is our structure going to be? Okay, we got to figure that out. What is it going to look like? Right, so at the top, you know, this can, you know, we can add in, um, let's say, introduction. But before our introduction, um, you know, we can work backwards in here too. We can say, what do we reverse engineer in our messaging? Right. And we want to say that the conclusion is going to be our offer, which is step A. So we can kind of say conclusion. I don't want to do it backwards, but since we have our reverse engineering hat on, this is what kind of what I want you to think like. Okay, and then I'll kind of reshift this. So conclusion, and then we, we can see what our paragraphs Hey guys, and don't mind me if I get silent for a second. I mean, that should actually make you happy because I'm actually um, not one of these guru marketers who like talks at the speed of light or like tries to persuade you with these fancy words, even though I know how to use them. But, you know, I do that because of one, I'm an introvert and two, I'm, you know, cerebral. Uh, um, I think more up here than, than I do talk. So, um, even when I go quiet, you should know that it's of best benefit that I'm still here with you, but I'm thinking of my thoughts. And so what we do here, so we've done the offer. Okay, what is our offer gonna look like? Right. Okay, we got the offer. You know, we got we got our we got our call to action button down there, right? It's just hanging in there. You know, it might send them to the buy to get a sale. Lead magnet, as I said it earlier, whatever that is, you're trying to get them to do consultations, right? Whatever that is. Right. And then I think about it and I say, what is my conclusion going to be from there? So I know my conclusion, it's going to have my offer for sure. The conclusion is going to be in the offer. Okay. Um, so that'll be in there. And then I just kind of make it a point to say, what are going to be my main conclusion points? What I like to do, and I've done this a lot lately for the past six plus months now, and I've done a lot of asking questions in my conclusion. So at the very top, um, and I'll get into understanding headlines in a moment, why this is relevant, is I always like to end it with a question like, hey, what was your favorite part about this bike that you learned today? Or what was the least thing you liked about it? I can follow it up with that. So right, we can ask questions, ask questions like, what was your favorite? What was your favorite? So it could be followed by a positive to somewhat of a, call it not negative, but a dislike. Okay. And so that gets your reader, your audience who hasn't yet become an acquired customer or acquired lead, right? Gets them to see, okay, you do care about them. Um, and you really do know what you're talking about. Like, hey, what was your favorite aspect of the, you know, name of the bike? Insert that here, quote, quote, what was your least favorite? And why do you think that is? Or what was your least favorite? And that gets the engine running for your audience. That gets them to think, wow, this person does really care about asking me things. Or, hey, I, you know what? Now that I read this, I really did like where Jim or Sally sh showed me the benefits, not only just the features, but the benefits of how this bike can go through 30 miles of rough terrain in the wet, uh, in the snow without pivoting or without ever you know breaking speed and whatever that is okay and so then you use that and you run with it and then you can do more like hey then you start you know you start getting into the conclusion phase like you start asking saying like you know whether there are you know recumbent bikes whether there are, these are uh, you know whatever type of bike you know this bike 
is the solution to helping you. You know, you remind them of the problem they're dealing with. So we're going to put here. Remind them of the problem. And um, I'm going to put in my messaging SPARF technique. I've talked about this in a previous video. But, you know, SCARF meaning, you know, searchability. You know, when people go, um, searchability can be social, uh, sociability too. I, I put under each of these letters a couple of different things that they mean. Searchability, when people are on Google or whatever they are on, on Facebook, are they able to search your content? Sociability, when they land on your post, read it. Facebook, Google, whatever that is. Is it shareable? Will they want to click that share button? Is it the type of content that they can share it, that they're willing to? C, um, that is call to action based. As we talked about up here, call to action, we're going to give them an offer, right? It's call to action. And then A, we have the authority. Um, kind of like, are we an authority to these people? Like, do we even look like that in their eyes? Like, will they believe what we're saying? Or they, should they just like run for the fence? Because I've gone through so many different posts and I'm like, I'm going to run for the fence. <laughs> I'm like, this person does not have a clue on what they are talking about. Why should I even ever purchase from them or listen to what they have to say? So authority on that audience, right? Um, that can be putting your audience front and center, which you're supposed to be doing. Relatability and readability. So relatability, telling your story. I talk about that in the one blog post away challenge. Um, relatability, uh, will people connect with you? Will they know, like, and trust you? How to put that in your content? Where to put it in your content? Why? Um, F, will they be able to find it again on Google? Is it easy for them to, uh, going back to R, readability, can they read through the content without getting lost? Content is broken up nicely. Um, that's how you write better quality content. When you have readability in mind, when you know you can separate the paragraphs, that's when you are going to start having better quality. Findability on Google, headlines, meta descriptions, um, Facebook, scrolling, uh, Instagram, TikTok, whatever that is. Okay. So now we worked into our sub paragraphs here. Um, actually, sorry. So remind them of the problem. What is it that they're dealing with? So don't go away from this. Too many people do in the conclusion. This will 20, 30, 100 times X your content. For a fact, I've tested and split tested. I've done this, spent many of my hours doing this. So you guys don't have to go through the pains of it. But remind them of their problem. Um, you know, you can be. I won't get into the future pacing, but you can say something like um, the problem agitate and solve solution just a little bit more. So we're just reminding them, hey, you know, you're dealing with X, Y, and Z. You can't get up from your butt to get on your bike. And it's more difficult for you to accept that you have to sit on the couch more often. But good thing is you have this recumbent bike here that you came to look for, whatever it is, whatever type of post you're doing. And the solution to that, fortunately, is you being able to get your hands on um, a better way to exercising without straining your back. You get a faster motion without all the work and strain to put on your legs, to put your knees and your joints and your muscles through all this pain. And you get to finally feel what it is like to be on top of your health once again. Okay, now just hearing that without even seeing the bike, would you have bought into that? See, you got to put the result of your audience in mind. What is it that they want? What is the result? They won't listen to you until you know how much they know how much you care about them one, but they want to know the result you can get them. They really don't care about you so much. They care about the result you can generate them. So by reminding them of the problem, agitating it and giving them the solution will help. And then you can also incorporate Future pacing, neuro-linguistic, uh, neuro I sometimes don't pronounce that word. But um, future pacing, what is it that we want them to become in the future? Like here you are now, but here's where you can be in the future, right? Just imagine having this bike in your hand, right? You put your hands over the pedal or over the uh, handlebars. As you grip them nice and tightly, your feet are set into the pedals. But before you head off on this travel that you have. You pick up the water bottle that's sitting right next to your bike. Take a nice little sip, put it back into this container, sit back firmly on your recumbent bike. And as you look up, you can see the whole trail now sitting right in front of you and you know you're gonna own it once you go. 
And so that's what you're doing. You're future pacing them. And you really want to just, you know, hit them with the benefits. Um, actually, I'm going to go up here a little bit. So we just kind of did it in the future pacing, but we want to give them the benefits also. Remind them of the problem in a, in a way. Give them the benefits of it. And then hit them with a little future pace if you would like, you can do. And then we give them a simple call to action in our offers. I went over up, up above. And the conclusions will differentiate. They will be different upon what you're doing. What is your content on, okay? Everything will be different. Now, I've gone over the 40 minutes. <laughs> I kind of do this at times. But hopefully, you're getting value out of this. Uh, body paragraphs. Um, let me know also in the comments if you are here. Uh, have you tried this before and it just hasn't worked? What, have you, what are you trying now? What do you think you can change? Right? You can't move until you accept the problem. So subparagraphs, right? We want to write body paragraphs. And this, this can be the H2 or even H3. I usually go with H2 topics. And then I have subparagraphs. And these can be an H3 format, right? H2 to H3. And so now I have an emphasis on what I'm going to write about. So this could have been, um, you know, best... Pumping bikes for men over 50. I don't know. So subparagraphs H3, then we can get into the types of bikes. So bike number one, right? Or we come in bike number one. We want to follow the theme. And then we can do the same thing for the next one. And of course, that name is going to, it's going to have a name for the bike. But those are your subparagraphs. And then in those subparagraphs, right, then we do this again. We get into the whole um headline we want to have a good headline first that's thought provoking that then makes them want to read the second sentence remember always thinking about what they have to do to read the second sentence once you can figure that out then you'll have a recipe here you can go off with but we have the headline that makes them read it even more um you're not only giving them the features but you're going into the benefits of things right what are the benefits of it what are they going to get as a result of this what is this um and to spice up your content to write better content you want to use things like so you can, so you can have, so you can keep, so you don't have to worry about staying up late at night, worrying about what you're going to do tomorrow, which means right, we, we spice it up. And then to go even a step further, we use things like which means, which means gets them into a trance that thinks, okay, what is the meaning for me, right? We give them the features, the benefits, but we take it a step further with which means, and then we move from there. So the subparagraphs, depending on the type of content, it could be a how-to informational infographic type of content. It could be a review, a list post, depends on what you're doing, but we want to cover the emphasis on H2, H3s, the headline leading them into the second part of the paragraphs. We then start um, getting into the more of the features, the benefit side, the meaning of it. Um, you know, you use relatability with little keywords like, I totally get what you're going through and you say how you know people are going to be like how i was once in your shoes trying to figure this out on my own and uh and here's what i realized that most people don't Dot, dot, dot. And then we can go into the second paragraph, right? But that's giving relatability and you're spicing up the content by getting people to know that you've been through a similar situation as you, as they have, excuse me. And so then you can relate better and the people will know, like, and trust that better. And they will make more of an informed call to action decision. All this will predicate whether they take the offer at the end, in the middle, at the top, right? But we're, we're using these call to actions. We can use them throughout our content. So to write better quality content, okay? And so when you know the call to act, it might be a different call to action than at the very conclusion. It could be something different in the middle. You're like, here's a free guide. Um, or at the top, you could like, be like, here's an article to go to. So when you know that, when you know that call to action, your content will actually flow more easily. You'll be like at the very top, for example, if you have an introduction, um, then it'll be something like, oh, I, by the way, I also wrote, wrote a post on the five best bikes on this. So everything leading up to that will be better. Your content will just flow more naturally if you know what that call to action will look like. 
Okay, so you got to know what your call to actions are going to be throughout. I'm going to put this in throughout your content. Okay, I want to overemphasize that. So throughout your content, know what your call to actions are. Sprinkle them in there. When you know something is different than the other, you'll be like, you'll know how to lead up to it much more naturally. Okay. Instead of just trying to force a call to action in there, like I see every so many people do, it, it just. Uh. And then, uh, so relatability, we're kind of tackling that. Uh, we're putting all this content in there. We're we're uh, giving it readability. Um, you're using what you already gathered in your researching stage to write this better content, and you're going to get more traffic as a result of this because you've done the researching phase. You know what it is people are searching for. You know what your competition is doing. You know what you're going to do better than they are. Um, you're using things like the skyscraper technique from Brian Dean, right? We know what our audience is already writing, and we just do it 100 times better than they are. If they have seven top recumbent bikes, we do double that, triple that, 14, 21, right? We do a much better thing. And then what they don't have in their content, we add into our content. They didn't have an FAQ. We put an FAQ. They didn't put subparagraphs the way they were supposed to. They didn't properly structure their content the way they were supposed to. We do it better. They missed out a key point about the benefit of something. They don't have enough benefits. We put more benefits in there. Okay, we write things that are better than that, okay? Because we're better than that, right? People just produce content just to produce it and it doesn't really generate the best results. Okay, so then... Now we can kind of get into it. So, so this is more or less, right? The body paragraph will look different depending on what type of content you're writing, but this is more or less what you want to go into. So the introduction here, we want to have a headline, captivating headline again. And then we just kind of get into the intro, right? We just kind of pre-frame them into what they're going to expect. And this is the part that most people, they fail on. And this is why I see so many people have a high bounce rate or they don't even get interactions or engagements because they don't have the right intro that leads into their body paragraphs. So the intro can be things like, you know, um, ask a quite ask a very captivating headline question or something like that. Be like, did you know over 90% of affiliates fail if they're within their first year and want to know why? how and why. So this is like, oh, damn, I want to know. Whoa, excuse my language. Like, I want to know why, right? It even get, brings a different person out of them. And so uh, so then that leads into a second thing. Like, you know, then you can, it depends on the type of post you're doing. If it's a review post, if it's like they're trying to answer something like, what is this type of a question? You can answer the question in a two to three word sentence there. Ranks well in Google as a snippet. That's for another time. But um Depends on what the question is, or if it's just whatever they're searching for, what's their intent. So then we lead into it like, um, you know, with, you know, you were not wrong to come in here today as I, and then you want to kind of just put your name in there, sprinkle your name in there, be the authority. Don't be afraid to um personally brand and business brand yourself this is what a lot of people go away from and they don't do this enough in their intros is they don't have their own name use this and you can even link to your about me page because a lot of people will want to know more about you and how it is you are different so don't go away from that so again that might not even come first it can be stuff like you know i get what you're thinking so let me answer your question. So let me cut to the chase. And you may answer their question there. Um, and then you can go into something like with so many people.
see what I did there? So it's the same concept I've used throughout and I'm doing the whole problem agitate and solve. So I'm kind of stating the problem that this person may be going through. And then I just agitated a little bit more by going like they wanted to quit. They wanted to watch their favorite TV show, eat couch, be a couch potato. But fortunately, there's a solution where you can not only get rid of your inflammation, but within seconds. So you can finally live a healthier life, have more freedom to walk around your home and outside and have more control. Right. And then I can, you know, I can massage that. You want to massage it a little bit more. So we stated their problem because we're meeting them at their problem, right? We're getting to understand them by writing that content down. We're not just saying, you know, our headline is going to just speak it all. No, we want to, you know, state the problem and be like, hey, and you might hit more problems and be like, yeah, I have that problem too. And then you get into the um, agitation and then the solution stage. But then from there on out, you say, okay, um, you know, it could be something like, and, you know, and I, your name, will pull back the curtains. You know, they always use that word. We'll reveal, we'll use reveal here, the top tips to live, to getting rid of your lower back pain, the pros and cons, the alternatives, so much more. Right? We can kind of go into that, right? And this can be also combined with number four up here, if you do it correctly. But that's how you go into this. All right now you're going to lead into your body paragraphs, right? We just did, um, we reverse engineered. We can start with our headline first. We go into our body paragraphs and then we go to the conclusion. In the conclusion, we have our offer. So this is a general gist. Now let me get into this side of things. So this is one of my sites here. If you haven't seen this, I covered this a little bit in, oh, mostly in the um, one block post away challenge. Okay, nobody go and copy, you know, what many people are like, well, if you're showing me something, I'm just going to copy what they do. No, it doesn't work like that. Create your own content, find what you do. And, and most likely if you do regurgitate and, and copy somebody else, you will get, there are losses to this. And um, I have already had to deal with people who have gone through my stuff and try to replicate a lot of it, but um, they usually don't turn out the way they want them to be. Anyways, but this is the content here. So, you know, I have how to's, how to's there, tips, how to avoid that, um, review posts, right? We'll, we'll kind of go into one of these. Um, but I made it my own. It's my own content. I've actually experienced this. And you write better content by having better, um, having actually tried the product. So be somebody who actually uses the products. Don't just be that person who just writes the review all the time. You don't have to have necessarily own it, but it's better to do that. So I've kind of gone into this, you know, the headline there, um, and then kind of gone into the headline there, the agitation, the problems that I'm going to show them, and then the solution. You know, good thing is I, Michael, it's blah, 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 back and suffer with last tremor. We'll show you how to get your life back in order with the pros, the cons, alternatives, and so much more. So I kind of lead into that at the bottom there with, um, a little bit of my link that goes to my about me. And then up above here, we have the headline. I state the keyword in the first sentence or so. It doesn't have to be directly in the first one, but you can see the first one. Would you like to see one of the world's very best natural weight loss supplements? Boom. And then I go into, is it a scam or does it really have the most powerful? And I answer them here with this bold statement to the question that they're seeking for. I'll answer it at the very top. I don't, I don't know longer as much, you know, keep pulling their string until they find out the answer at the below. I kind of go into this, but I reframe it and I go, it's not, it's a scam, but, or it's not a scam, but does that mean it's the right one for you? Okay. Enough with this question, with these questions. Listen, there are tons of weight loss products claiming to help you lose weight without having to move a muscle or that you can just eat anything you like you like, and you'll lose 50 pounds. And it only leaves you frustrated in pain and eventually wanting you to give up. You're tired of that. And you're also tired of waking up every day, struggling to get out of your bed and not because you can't physically, but because you're too ashamed to follow through inside of your mind. You hate being out because you think others will then judge you or you're sitting on the couch picking at the bottom of the Doritos chips bag when there's no more in it and in pain. So it's time you fully take responsibility for your actions and come to a realization that if you continue down this path, you're going to regret waking up one day and think about how you wasted your time. But good thing is, is I might, you know, and I go into that and it depends on the type of content you're going to table of contents, body paragraphs, but let me actually show you from the very bottom. So we would kind of stick to the reverse engineering uh, part of this. So my offer, they can go and get that bottle of proven. 
Um, and then I leave it here with the FAQs. There's the call to action, conclusion, what I like least, what I like most, alternatives, pros and cons, who's not, who's proven not for. This is all the body, who's it proven for, another call to action there. So that predicts how my content is going to look. If I know I'm going to have a call to action there, I know where my rest of my content is going to be. And so I keep going here up and down, up and down, up and down, and up until the very top where my introduction is. And so you just want it to flow, following how to write better content. And that's going to come from, again, your research. Um, and here's another one I want to show you. On my other side, again, I have a couple projects. But um, in this one here, no, that's not what I want. See if this loads, stick for every load. If it doesn't, it's okay. We just covered one. For some reason, it does take a little longer when I'm on live. Okay, so for this example, If it loads. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. If you're here this far into this, um, you know, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and thanks for sticking with me this far. Really do appreciate your time. I know it's valuable. Oh, this is really taking some time. Okay, so in this post, you know, I'm going for VPNs. In the same structure, I have the headline that's very catchy, leads them into the second part. What about the top five? Choosing the best ones, table of contents. What is it? Prelude it. The top five or whatever, how much. I go into the benefits, right? I go into the, um, the benefits in there with the bullet points, features, and the meanings, right? Call to actions in each and every single one of these, right? You can see that bulletin point following. And then I go to the very bottom here, final thoughts, and then call to actions. And that is that, okay? So that's where I want to end it with this video. You know, go into the researching phase, understand the frameworks within the frameworks, really do your researching. That's where it all begins and understanding what content is already out there, what people are actually searching for, what do they actually want, what other people have that, they, that you can do better that they don't have, and then move from there. Okay, guys, hopefully this helped you out. This will generate you more um better content and better traffic at the end of it all when you know all this and that's it okay thank you